Hi guys, and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'll be giving you a look at the Layout Objects application within the Leica Icon Field software. The Layout Objects application is an added license. You can check down in the active licenses, and what we're looking for is to see Layout Objects activated or present here within the Applications section. So if we jump back out, and we can jump into our Layout Objects application, once you have the Layout Objects application enabled, your controller will then be able to handle IFC BIM objects. Okay, so the Layout Objects application is quite similar in the sense to stake out layout points and layout lines. However, it's just specific to objects. If we zoom around in 3D here, we'll see that I've imported in a structural IFC file and I have my robotic total station set up on the ground floor. So what I'm going to run through with you today, guys, is just some of the main features and tips and tricks how to kind of navigate your way around the layout objects application. So it's quite similar to the stakeout functions in the sense that all we want to do is select objects. When we select the objects, we'll be able to stake them out. However, the most difficult part is that as engineers or surveyors out the site, we're used to setting out in 2D. So traditionally looking from a top view. The issue is if I'm looking from a top view, I actually cannot see down to my ground floor plan. The main challenge within setting out objects is how to actually orientate yourself on screen and how to kind of give yourself the best view possible. So you kind of have to get comfortable in viewing in 3D, which can be accessed by selecting the arrow here, which goes around in a circle as opposed to the pan view option. So I'm first guys going to give you a look at some of the main view configuration options you have within the, within the objects they are at. They can all be found down here within the eye, down on the bottom ribbon. So if I select in here, the first one I'll start with is elevation filter. We can see here, guys, there's lighter bars on the right hand side, which will enable us to slice down through the building. We also have the option to manually input our upper and lower elevations for the filter. So once we're happy that we've sliced through, we can select green tick. And now we can see if we jump back into top view, it was a much clearer view, and now we could actually set out. But again, we're not limited. We would be able to stake out in 3D as well if we want and select back to pan. And what they'll enable you to do, guys, is once you can view the object that you're interested in, so I can say this column, for instance, we can select that column. And when you select the element or the object that you're interested in, it automatically creates points and lines on the main vertices of the object. So you can see here as well, if I select the floor, we can see the outer boundary line. If we want to deselect what we have already highlighted, we can just select clear. So that, guys, is the elevation filter. It's just good to note as well that when the elevation filter is active, you will see this icon up here with the house symbol and the upper and lower cutoff points. So if it's the case that you can't see any of your entities, it's just good to have to get into it to just check and see is the elevation filter active. Alternatively, what I'll do is I'll just reset the elevation filter. I'll come back into my view configuration options. And what I could do is I could use the isolate command. The isolate command is very useful because what it lets us do is we can select individual objects and select the green tick and all the other entities will disappear by the isolated object which you're interested in. So now it becomes a lot easier to kind of navigate around the view, okay, and inspect the element that we are interested in. So I jump back in and I will just unisolate these features. So the way you do that is you select your Clear marker down here and select green tick again. And the third viewing configuration option is if we select in here, we can go into our multi view configuration. So instead of going for a single view, we'll go for split. We could have it half and half, we could have it a third and two thirds. So I'll go with this option first. Whichever window I select into, you can see highlights, and that is the one that's set active. So if I select into one on my left hand side here, go back into my eye, I can activate the ISC3 view. If I select the one on the right here, I can navigate around. Now what I can do, guys, is your IFC3 view is similar to your layer managers, except it's a lot more intricate. So what we can see here is we can see our structure of our IFC. We can expand it. This is the project name. We can come in. That's the name of the actual model itself. And then we have each of our floors. So what we could do is we could switch off the whole model and then just switch on our first floor, or simply our second floor. Or alternatively, guys, what we could do is switch back on the model. We could extend out one of these, deselect, and actually just highlight just the columns, or again, just the footings. We could extend in again, and you can select individual columns. So between those three options, so just to kind of recap, your IFC3 view, which is similar to your layer manager, we have our isolate function, which lets us select individual 
features to isolate. And we have our elevation filter, which lets us cut down through the building. So between those three, we can kind of navigate and configure our view to kind of give us the most optimized view for the setting out password. Okay, guys, so I'll just return back to my single view here. And I'll just disable the IFC3 view. So now, guys, if I wanted to actually do some setting out, I'll just use the isolate function again. I will select my floor slab and confirm. Now, when laying out with objects, quite similar to the stakeout application in the sense that all the user has to do is select the element that they're interested in, the associated points and line works to that object will highlight. And then what the user can do is if we wanted to say, set out the edge or this line here, we just select our line like we normally would and select start. And like when you're using the stakeout application, if we just jump back to the top view here, we'll get the same values how far we are up the line from the start point, off the line of position, and in elevation. So I'll just move it over the line there. You can see there, just using the simulator, I can move my way back in and make it look like it's in grade there. So that's how we set out, guys. It's the same for selecting points. So if I actually wanted to just select a point on the junction, you can see here I can select my points. Okay. And similarly, again, I can navigate the way I normally would. Okay, as if I was laying near points. I can deselect the point by selecting on it like I normally would. But if I go back to selecting my line, we can see within the toolbox, we have the same ordinary features which we normally have in the sense where we can flip our line to start and end point. We can do our parallel offsets, our perpendicular offsets. We can join points using the connect points function. We can stake specified elevations via arcs, divide an offset. So one of the added features is the objects info command. The power of using objects as opposed to generic points and lines is the fact that within their properties, they can have associated attributes. So we can see here by selecting it, the level of information that's been associated to that object in Revit, for example, will carry across into the field controller. So it's just empowering the user to have a lot more information available to them out on site. Within the toolbox, we also have the auto staking feature. The auto staking feature was covered in its own tutorial. So if you have any questions relating to that, please refer to there. That's the basic navigation. And some of the tips and tricks have navigated around their BMISC files and the layout objects application. If you have any further queries relating to this, please feel free to get in touch.